So I was watching TV the other night. I was hanging out after the baby went to bed, and I noticed that an elderberry commercial came on, a commercial advertising elderberry extract. Now, the reason this caught me off guard is I don't know how long it's been since I saw a commercial recommending just a simple like vitamin or a simple compound like that, right? So it caught me off guard. Now, what was interesting is that prior to that, my son Tommy had been sick. So we tried taking elderberry, both my wife and I. And what I found is that I actually fought off the illness. Like normally, if you're in close confines with a baby that's sick, you're inevitably going to at least get a touch of it. Well, I didn't, and I thought that was pretty interesting. Now also, we've been seeing when we walk into the grocery store, Whole Foods, Sprouts, whatever, there's been end cap displays of elderberry. So clearly elderberry is getting very popular. So I wanted to do my own research. Obviously I tried it out on myself, but I wanted to dive into the research and figure out exactly what was going on and why this stuff is so popular and if it actually works. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. I wanna make sure you go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and then go ahead and hit that bell icon so you can turn on notifications so you know whenever I go live. If you haven't already, I wanna make sure you check out Thrive Market down in the description below. So Thrive Market makes it so that you can get your groceries delivered right to your doorstep. Never have to leave your house if you really didn't want to. You can go online, get your groceries in the same way that you would get them in the grocery store, except they're gonna get delivered right to your doorstep and it ends up being cheaper in the grocery store. So all of my favorite fasting options, my keto options, my hormone optimization options, all these things are all there. So I've put together these specific Thrive boxes. So go ahead and check them out in the description after you watch this video. But now let's go ahead and let's get right to the fun stuff. So elderberry in a nutshell, it comes from the Sambucas tree it's nothing that amazing at a glance, okay? It's just a powerful extract from a powerful compound, a powerful fruit, right? So also known as black elder. Now what's interesting is when you look at it at a glance, you see that it's high in vitamin C, it's high in specific phenolic acids and flavonoids. Okay? Nothing that's that earth shattering, nothing that would be that crazy compared to like some of the other high antioxidant fruits and veggies that you could eat. So why is it so powerful? Well, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna take a look at a study, because this is just some justification as to why I wanted to do this video, because studies actually do show that elderberry is pretty powerful. So there's a study that was published in the Journal of International Medical Research, took a look at patients that had either influenza type A or type B viruses. And what they did is they gave one part of the group elderberry extract, and they gave another part placebo, and they wanted to see how it actually affected the duration of the flu. So get this, those that took the elderberry extract and they gave them 15 milliliters four times per day for five days, those that took that extract ended up having symptoms that started to improve after two to four days, whereas those that did not didn't improve till seven or eight days. Okay, pretty powerful stuff. I mean, that's a pretty concrete study right there. And there's another study, but I'm gonna talk about it towards the end of this video, because I wanna break down like, some of the main three components of elderberry and talk about why they might be contributing to these amazing effects. Okay, first is vitamin C, okay? That doesn't need a whole lot of explaining except for some cool science that's actually involved. Okay, in our immune cells, we have little transporter molecules. These transporter molecules sit on the outside on the membrane of immune cells. And what their job is, is to pump in vitamin C when needed. So when we get sick or we have inflammation, what happens is we demand more vitamin C. So those pumps pump a lot of the vitamin C. Normally vitamin C is just chilling on the outside of the cell, right? Outside of the membrane. But when it's needed, it gets pumped in. So what happens is we get deficient really quick. That's why when you get sick, you're supposed to take vitamin C. You shouldn't be taking vitamin C all the time. It's useless. But you should be taking vitamin C when you start to feel like you're getting sick or you feel like your immune system's compromised because that is legitimate. Your body does need it at that time. So you might as well ramp up your, your utilization or your consumption of it. The problem is elderberry doesn't have all that much vitamin C. It's really nothing crazy. Next up, super high in phenolic acid. Again, a cool thing, but nothing to super write home about, right? Like phenolic acid is just a powerful flavonoid, a powerful component that can go ahead and absorb through your small intestine and get utilized well. But again, nothing crazy. Then we have quercetin and camphorol. Okay, these are powerful flavonoids. Okay, quercetin is powerful because it helps boost glutathione levels. So if your immune system is compromised, your glutathione levels might be low. So therefore, quercetin should help boost those levels up. Okay, it also stops, or inhibits at least, nuclear factor kappa B to some degree. This is the inflammatory response, which is kind of a toss-up because you don't necessarily want to stop or stunt the inflammatory process when you're sick. You kind of want the natural progression to occur. A little bit of inflammation is good, so the jury is still out if actually stopping inflammation or trying to reduce it when you're sick is actually a good thing. 
But then when we get into the camp feral, this is where things get interesting and where I would hypothesize that a lot of the benefit from elderberry comes from. It is pretty high concentrations of camp feral. And camp feral does something really interesting. You see, it actually acts upon what's called the endocannabinoid system within the body. And it does so through a unique pathway. We have something known as fatty acid amide hydrolase, FAAH. So the fatty acid amide hydrolase is not a good thing. Okay, what it does is it stops andandamide from breaking down into endocannabinoids. Endocannabinoids are needed to disrupt specific bad inflammatory responses. Okay, so endocannabinoids are very good within the body. We have a natural production of them. Andandamide is very important to that process. Fatty acid amide hydrolase stops andandamide from doing its job. What's cool is get campferol stops FAAH. So the campferol stops the fatty acid amide hydrolase from ever breaking down that andandamide. So it stops the bad guy. This is where it gets interesting, okay, because it's actually a chain reaction. So this could be what's actually making elderberry work. Now, the truth is, I don't think we're looking deep enough into elderberry because the studies are remarkable. Here's another study that proves how powerful elderberry is. So the journal Nutrients published a study that took a look at 312 airline passengers that were flying economy. If you've ever flown economy, which I'm sure you have, you know that invariably you pretty much get sick, right? You're just bound to. You're gonna sit next to someone that doesn't take care of themselves and is just like crawling with germs and they're gonna touch you, right? Or something, you're gonna touch something. It's just, it's just always gonna happen. Maybe that's a little bit extreme, but the fact is you get sick when you fly. So it took a look at 312 airline passengers flying from Australia to an overseas destination. And what they found is that by giving half of them elderberry and half of them placebo, of those that consumed elderberry, only 57 people ended up getting sick. Versus those that didn't consume elderberry, 117 people got sick. Here's what's really cool though. Those that didn't consume elderberry were also taking other things to help support their immune system and they were even taking cold medications. Okay, so their days sick were also longer than the elderberry group. So it just gets fascinating. It's clearly elderberry has an effect. I would just argue that we don't know exactly what. Okay, we can only tell with what research is available right now. That doesn't mean that there isn't new research that can come to foot about elderberry. The fact is, I've seen it work and it seems to be pretty interesting. One thing that I would say though, is it's not something you would wanna take every single day because it's something that seems to support the immune system in a time of need. And just like anything, you don't wanna give your body a crutch. You wanna use it when your body demands it so that you don't develop some kind of tolerance or just homeostasis with it. Anyhow, that's that. That's that on elderberry. I honestly think that it's good stuff. I vouch for it. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos, well, you know where to put them. See you soon.